So there are a lot of jobs coming in. And uh, I would really want you guys to uh, like start preparing and be ready. And then uh, this week, if you could just put together what you've been learning so far in a Word document and then send it to me, then I'll start preparing the resume, okay? Start doing this week, please. Because the first quarter, they usually, uh, the big corporations, they have budget uh, set up last quarter. And this is the first quarter of the year and that's when the hiring is going on. So from now up until end of March, you should land a job. Okay, so last time we covered SFTP and VSFTP, right? Yeah, and uh, VSFTP. You could see my screen, right? Yes. Yeah, I can see it. All right, today I'm gonna to cover a TCP dump. What TCP dump is, uh, is just uh, capturing the network traffic. So if there is a problem going on um, on the network, and if there is like a network issue or a slowness or something like that, you use the utility called TCP dump. And uh, what you really do is you don't really work much with TCP dump, but as an admin, you would have uh, access to running it. So during the troubleshooting process, uh, the network team would ask you to give the output for the TCP dump. And uh, here's what, how you do it, okay? so. Let me uh, let me start this. Okay, and uh, let me start this one too. Hey, Zephyr, uh, regarding putting your resume together, I wanted to see uh, if you could send it in. Maybe you could provide I, I could, I cannot hear you clearly. Okay. Um, well, maybe, maybe my microphone is too low. to come to Orange County, the best place. Orange County is good? The best, actually. Mm. I visited that uh, only in uh, 2005. Uh -huh.
Are you in Southern California? Where are you? Yeah, in Southern California. An area called Irvine. Irvine. Sent you my resume. Okay, good. Let me see. Okay, so what TCP dump is? Uh, it is a it is a network uh, network packet analyzer. You won't be using it much, but you will get a request. You will get a request to provide the TCP dump for the for the uh, machine. So what you have to do is you have to install this TCP dump. Since you are a root user, only you could run these commands. So what you have to do is uh, you have to first check if this is available or already installed. Most of the time it's already installed when you go on to the work, okay? So in here is already installed. Let's see if it's here installed. Okay, so these are two different. These are two different uh, systems host. So we're going to try to capture it uh, from one to another. Okay. So first you have to figure out what what network ports you could do the capture. So you run this command TCP dump. TCP dump hyphen D. And it over here it will give you all these things you could do the capture here. So in in this example it says ETH zero, but ETH two is active here. How are you gonna do it? it's ETH two? You type ifconfig. 
and you see ETH2 is the one with the IP address. And let's type it here. And over here, ETH0 is uh, the one you could capture the network traffic on. How do you know that? You type IF config. And you see ETH0. We learned about how to configure ETH0 in network part, okay? So what we're doing here is we are capturing the TCP dump capture until it receives an interrupt signal. So we type TCP dump hyphen I. T, T, TCP dump hyphen I any. So we're capturing any kind of network traffic. So you could see there is so much network traffic going on right now. So that that is not going to help uh, as much here because the network is already communicating with the router. So what we're going to do is uh, give me uh, give me one second. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to ca capture only five packets. Okay. So what you do is you type the same command hyphen C then number five. So it captured five packets. So let's see here. Okay. So you see one, two, three, four, five. These are the packets that were captured here, okay? So, so it captured five lines here, right? But what you really have to do is, your job is to just capture this and give it to the network team here. You don't have to worry about how do you read this and uh, what else all this is. Uh, you know, if you, if you could, uh, TCP dump is a big bigger topic in itself but I'm not really worried about it because as an admin, you're just uh, running these commands and giving the output to the network team. So I want to save this to the file here. How do I save this to the file? Anybody? Yeah, you bought greater than okay. and op open uh, any file, any name. Okay, now what you have to do is that you don't have, you can't type txt. What you have to type is you have to type pcap. This is a TCP dump file extension. Okay, so if somebody would ask you to, okay, give me the output for the TCP dump on this uh, host. So you have to automatically uh, say run whatever commands you want, but the last name, the, you give the first name dot, the last name would be PCAP, P-C-A-P. -P. Okay, and then let's see here. This is where this file is. What you usually do is you just throw this uh, file into the, into the temp folder. Because the network team don't have access to, don't have access to uh, to the to the folders inside inside the root or wherever they may have the, the the regular user have access to temp folder okay and you see this is where it is so you could tell the network team that okay I put this uh, output of this uh, TCP dump into the temp folder and you just tell them and send the ticket back to them and they'll say okay then they will go in there and copy from there okay you don't have to worry about much. But if they say if they tell you to oh no copy this to a, a particular server, so what you have to do is you have to follow this procedure here SCP. I have showed you how to use SCP.
I thought I showed you how to use SCP, right? SCP. Extending disk. Okay, may, maybe not, but I'll show you how to how to transfer the file from one server to another server. Okay, in a in in a little bit once I'm done with this. Show us in the SSH uh, how to move from server to server. Yeah, that's that's really good that you brought that up. First thing you're going to be doing when you get into the job is you're doing the SSH. You will be you will be connecting from your laptop to a dummy dummy host, dummy server. From there, then you're going to connect to the real servers using SSH. It's called Bastion host. But Zafari, you know, still showing me sometimes the error when I open two server. I don't know, the virtual box doesn't handle it. Yeah. You have to take a picture and send it to me. Yeah, same what happened last time. I tried to find out the command which you wrote, uh, like on the last video, but uh, I think you are you are not recording this. <laughs> I'm recording it. No, 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 not that, not this one, not this time. Last time, oh. when you like you, the you recorded the class, but uh, your comment to which which you give it and the solution for what we ask for. Remember when you we do me and Jacob, it was not recorded this part. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I will check. I will check again, and I will let you know if I start. Yeah, no. I mean, I told you so many times. Uh, take a picture and send it to send in the group, and I want somebody to answer it before I answer. It. Okay. All right. So let's move on, and uh, we have another command here: hyphen nn. So the capture output not displays the IP addresses and port numbers. This also prevents TCP dump for issuing DNS lookup. So let's see. So what it's doing here is it's capturing the five packets and then it's um, it's preventing the DNS lookup here. We will talk about this later on, but it's uh, giving the quick and easy way to bring this up here. Okay. All these things uh, like this output here. Okay, you could read this uh, through on your own, but I'm gonna briefly go over this here. So we are worried about this. Uh, we are worried about one of this here. So this is like one capture. So the very first one is, this is what this is, is this is a timestamp. When was it run? It was run 1126 a.m. and 39 seconds. Okay, this is what it says. It's a timestamp. All this much. It's probably going into milliseconds too. Okay, and then uh, IP. It's this is a network layer. All up until here is a network layer. Okay. This is a network layer. And then this is a source IP. This is where it's connecting to the source IP. The source IP is the, in this case, the IP address for this computer, for the physical hardware. And you see the source IP is 110. Okay, 110. And then a destination IP. Okay, in here, it didn't capture the destination IP because we didn't ask him to capture the destination IP. And then P is the flag. And then in here, under P, there are so many things that are listed here. 
and uh, p dot or p s okay p is the flag here but it, there is nothing else has captured under a p okay so p is blank and the sequence the sequence this is the sequence number some of these things are even beyond me but you will give this to a network team and they are the one who will analyze this and acknowledgement one this is act one so this is the number uh, they will plug it in for them for themselves to analyze this and the wind si window size is 32 milliseconds 3.32 milliseconds here and the length is 208 so the packet size of the length is 208 bytes okay and there are other filters in here but don't stress too much on this the only thing you're doing is you're capturing this and giving it to the network team and i'm gonna since i'm here i'm gonna go ahead and run these commands over and then see uh, uh what is gonna happen okay let's see here tcp tom hyphen i any hyphen C5 ICMP. Okay, right now what we type here is we typed into the listening mode. So I'm going to open another window. Okay, a duplicate session. And in here, it's telling us, uh, okay, uh, okay, I'm gonna, these, these, these two are same, okay? So it's listening in. Now I'm gonna try to do, uh, make, uh, uh, do some activity here and then see what will happen here. Over here, you should start capturing it. Okay, did you see that? It will continue capturing it here, but its job is to capture only five packets because we told it to capture five packets. So you will get a request from a network team to capture five packets. So, they will tell you, okay, I need to capture ICMP, and uh, these are this is what they want you to do. So, what you'll do is you'll you will run this command like this, and then give him the output. Don't worry about how you would read this or under, understand this. Okay, I'm just showing you uh, the demonstration process, like different commands here. Okay, and then uh, what we could do is you could uh, you could run against this host here. So. Let me just type it out here. TCP dump hyphen I any hyphen C5 and N and the host. And I'm going to give the host name this. Okay. So it's listening in here, but there is no activity going on in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, do some activity here. Okay. So what it did is this command on this host, it was able to capture only one packet. So I think there is some problem going on between here and there. So it was able to capture only one packet, even though we told it to capture five packets here. But let's try something else.
Okay. So in here, it did capture five packets and it's not capturing on this host, not itself. It's capturing on the third party on the same network. Okay. Did you get it? This is how uh, things get uh, tracked. And then if somebody's tracking you and they could uh, check your activity here and using the TCP dump at this moment, uh, this IP was pinging this IP and there is other network traffic was going on. Let's see here. Um, let me try to download something. Okay. Okay, so it failed to do that. So let me add port 80. So what I'm trying to do is it's not working. So this is how, uh, what you're gonna do is if things are not working on your side, you work in collaboration with the network team. Okay, not everything uh, in the uh, IT environment is dependent on you because your work and your network team uh, networks are interdependent. So you have to uh, ask the network team and see uh, what you could do to uh, capture the packets here. So this is not like a perfect environment we have here. But uh, these are the tools, uh, TCP commands, you could use it to uh, provide and help a network team. Okay, let me close this. So let's see here, it says TCP dump using port 80. TCP dump hyphen I, any hyphen C5. hyphen nn port 80. Again, I missed it. So now it's listening on port 80 here. So let me try. Okay, let me do port 20, cancel this and port 22. Okay, so 80 is not set up here, but I'm showing you on the port 22. So the TCP dump went in there and captured this activity, okay? So these are these are all the commands. What you would say is like keep it handy when you would uh, you would uh, okay see here the complex it's giving you okay here you could use this command okay
okay, so I'm listening. I'm from here. I'm listening on here, and let me try to run this uh, yum install Firefox and see if it's going to capture it. Okay, so it's not working the way I wanted to. I'm not sure why not. But here's the command here. If uh, if if you get a request, and this is the source host, and then the port which is 80. So you use this command to do it, okay? Because in this environment, what I'm showing here, it's not like a perfect. It's not working actually. Uh, but these commands, you keep it handy. And you would you would need it when you are running the TCP command, okay? So so like here it's showing you you save the PCP and then the port 80. But when you go into your job, it will have all the documents here how to run TCP dump and all those. Okay, let's see here. Uh, uh, So you could uh, try like TCP dump hyphen I ETH2. So you could see this is the activity which is going on here. Captured ASCII TCP dump hyphen A. So it captures in the uh, ASCII, uh, ASCII key. You know what ASCII keys are, right? Yeah, I the ASCII characters, but uh, is that the Yeah, the character thing? map. So like these are all the characters ever developed or being used in uh, in the world, I suppose. So these are like for this font, this I is it's not the same thing as uh, for this because the because the binary behind it is different. It's a lot of lot of things here. This is beyond us. So this, this is what this is characters. But I, I'm not sure why they would ask you, but if they would ask you, you just use this command here, okay? And then display TCP dump hyphen D, it displays available uh, interfaces. Displays ca captured, uh, let's try running this. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, whatever is capturing behind the scene, this is what it's capturing. These are, these are what, what it's capturing here, what we've been seeing here earlier. 
this is what actually it's capturing. So each of these is what all these are, I suppose. But don't worry about this. For you, you will only. Uh, I've been working so long, but you be, you only get apps. Uh, you get only get a request to run the TCP dump like this. Okay. I would suggest you just try going and uh, try fooling around with like run this command a couple times and see if it makes sense here. But don't stress too much on this because you're not using it. You're just helping the network team. Uh, to work on this, okay? All right, let's get out of this. Oh boy, I want to cover this. But can some, can all of you guys show up ex on exact time tomorrow? Because this is a big topic. I am keep delaying. I want to get cover this and get over with this because DNS home directories, IPA, and uh, NFS and Pixie. One, two, three, four, five. These are like five heavy topics, which takes like about two hours for me to demonstrate how they work. Can somebody, uh, can all of you guys show up at the same exact time, 11, 11 central? So that we start and end, uh, and it's going to be a two hour class. 10 central, right? 10 central? Yeah, 11. Yeah, 10 central. It will be 11 for me. So, okay. yeah, tomorrow show up. We'll start the class like log in five minutes early, then we'll just start the class at 11. And I want to demonstrate all this. These are like big, heavy topics. It's going to take two hours. And then we have a scripting here. We're going to have to go over. It's going to take about one month for us to complete the scripting. Okay. Once you are done with the scripting, then uh, I will uh, will do the troubleshooting steps here. I'm going to add uh, in another another uh, document in here that it's going to say troubleshooting. So we'll use uh, troubleshooting. So that when the first day you go on job, the most of the time you would be end up troubleshooting the problems. Ping, no SSH, all those things are really good stuff. So if we're not finished with the class, then how do you how do you expect us to um, get a position since we haven't covered all of it? You guys are ready for the interview. This is first basic command the editor. And then the interview questions. You are ready to take the interview. But nobody is going to come and ask you, uh, you know, how you going to, how you going to like uh, do this, uh, set this up uh, like Apache or something. If they do, then you will have this window open, and then you will just go through this. I could tell you the steps of how the Apache is uh, set up and all that. These are all the SOPs here. They don't expect you to like memorize this, but I expect you to like uh, basic commands editor and then the interview questions. You stay on top of those and everything else. In essence, what are these here? Like you're creating LVM, right? It's just the like commands here. You're using a FDIS command and then you know you should be knowing how to how to type PV create and then. Um, you should know the difference between the backslash and forward slash, right? What is exactly this basic command will help you with that. Okay, even today, if uh, if I get a request to, uh, okay, do the NIC bonding, I'm not following this document here because I have to follow the co internal company document. Whatever document they have written up, I have to follow that. And if you are doing this like every day, you know the document, you just follow up uh, because you have done it so many times. Okay, but in the interview, you would keep this open and then uh, they will ask you uh, what is Nick bonding and how do you, how would you set up if the question comes up and then you would say like, oh, you just start off and say like, oh, you have to uh, worry about the configuration files. Just tell them these are the configuration files you need to do. 
and then the directories which are involved here, and then the package which is involved. I'm pretty sure this much information, if you give out, he's done. He's not gonna. He's not gonna for, um, go more and ask you all the details. He will say, okay, let's move on to something else. And you go like, how do you? How would you uh, do the password recovery? And you say like, oh, for six you do, you do the steps, and for seven you do the steps. And uh, and then if you get stuck, you just say, I'll pass this. What you could say is like, I know how to do this, but I couldn't remember on top of my head at this moment. I'll pass this now. And then he will, he will, he, the interview will understand because this is like a vast ocean. You're not going to remember everything, anything all the time. You just have to remember how, to, what you're looking for and how to look it up. Just like in Windows, right? If you're troubleshooting uh, back in the day, we used to Google so much and all that. And some of the commands uh, we used to run scan disk on the user's computer and tell them to call back in an hour or so. Remember those times? That's on top of your head. You remember those. But if something else happened, you Google it and you ask somebody else. You call QCR and they'll tell you to do next steps, right? That's how you're going to be working. You're going to be working like 40, 50 admins. And if you get stuck somewhere, you just put them on chat or uh, text them or whatever you have. Or, tools, you will ask them. You will have a chat session. Like, uh, you know how you could have like chat? Same yeah. time and all this, there will be a chat a window open all the time here. You have this, you have you have all these windows open. You have all these windows open. You, have, you will have like dual monitor setup, two monitor setup. You will have this working in here and then you will have like a chat going on in another window. You will have like an email open. And you have like your ticketing system open all that. And don't be afraid to ask someone. They're not gonna, you know, shame you because they will ask you, they will come back and ask you some stupid question and you will help them too. I'm gonna see if I have an easy topic left. That's funny that you remember QCR. <laughs> I haven't heard that for such a long time. <laughs> yeah, then they renamed it to QC. Yeah. <laughs> I, if I look back on it, those are like, you know, the basic, basic things back then. Yeah. 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 And they came up with the computer support plus <laughs> the logo. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody want a TV for that coming up with it. So. <laughs> Computer support plus. Okay, yeah, this is outstanding. I think I have to come back and show you how this grub works because it wasn't working. Did I finish this one? Yeah. So the user administration is done. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you how to copy a file from one place to another place using SCP. Okay, SCP is all is it's a built-in utility. Okay, which SCP? Okay, so let's see here. Yeah. 
Ok. Ok, SCP stands for Secure Copy. Ok, so how are you going to do that? To copy a file. Okay, let's see here, LS. I'm gonna delete everything here, okay? And then I'm gonna create a file name, touch file one. Okay, I'm on this host, and then I want to copy to this here. So this IP address is 192.168.1.16. So how are you going to do that? I'm copy SCP. SCP is a built-in command, OK? Give me one second. Okay, then what you do is type file name. Your your SCP in copying this file name, and then you copy to the other place. So you type root at, and then you either you could type the host name or the IP address. Okay, and then where you gonna copy? You copy and then slash temp. Okay, this is on a different host and then it's uh, nothing is in there, right? So I'm going to copy that file into this folder here. And I hit enter. And then it says yes, and then it will ask you for the password. And there you go, the file from here to here is copied. There you go. The file is here. All right. I think you could do the multiple files too. So we have five files here. And then what you would do is you want to copy all the files, what do you do to put asterisk there? Okay, so when I do ls here, there should be five files here. There you go. So if somebody asks you uh, to capture the TCP dump and then put it in here, or give me one play, specific place, you could uh, do that, okay. Okay, what was the command? Okay, so let's see TCP dump hyphen I any and then uh, you're copying to this folder. PCAP. 
and then usually they say like okay run it for like a one minute or something right so you're running it at the same time it's writing to this file here so since we didn't give it here like how many packets it's it's going to capture it's going to continue capturing all the packets okay and then uh, the network team will tell you okay capture it for like uh, one minute or two minute and then uh, you put a timer on your watch and put it for two minutes and then after that you do control c to cancel it and uh, in that in this particular example it has it has captured like 37 packets okay so it has some size there so now how are you gonna how are you gonna transfer that? Simple. You type SCP, and then they usually tell, okay, why don't you throw that that file into one of our one of our file for one of our for our servers? We don't have access to here, but we have access to one of our servers. Just throw in there into the temp folder. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go SCP, and then you go TCP dump a file name, and then you type in root at uh, and then uh, the IP address and then you do type colon temp you could type you could throw this in anywhere you want root slash or slash home okay Okay, we are in temp folder, right? It's not, we didn't put it in the temp folder. We put it in home folder. There you go. All right, very, very easy. So, Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the directory. MKDIR, DIR1. We're going to DIR1 and there is nothing in there. So I'm gonna touch. I'm gonna create 100 files in there. So there are 100 files, so let me back out of this. And then I'm gonna do SCP, and then the directory name, DIR. What do you need for directory? Hyphen R, that means recursively, all of them. Then root at the IP address colon slash home okay and you see the directory one in here and then we go into cd into directory one there you go all your files are there this is very very cheap and easy way to do this is just copy from one place to another place okay Copy files from one host to another. You get the idea right over here you could choose whatever directory you wanted to and over here too you don't have to be in the same directory to do this okay you did you know that so what you could do is uh, 
you are in root directory, right? This directory is in the root directory. So you go here and then you do, you are in the root folder now. So what you could do is you could type scp hyphen r and then I'm using the absolute absolute path root that's where the directory is and then I'm uh, I'm going to copy to the remote server and then slash temp and then slash if the directory doesn't exist you could create also create a directory there um, folder one See in here the folder one doesn't exist. So we are we are using this absolute path from wherever we are, copying the directory and throwing that into the temp folder. At the same time, we are creating a folder one. Okay, let's see if it's gonna work. It did work. See, a folder didn't even exist. We named it some other, some other brand new folder. We created the folder at the moment. And then we threw those files in that particular folder. We copied that file from a directory named dir, and then we threw those all those files into the folder name. Uh, we created a brand new folder which didn't exist, and we put that in here. copy folder and create new folder at destination host okay this this is kind of thing you have to follow it here and uh, and the same thing with the file here too you could have like uh, you could have you could copy your file name and then you could rename it at the same time. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so we have a file file name file one, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use SCP and then I'm gonna uh, use the absolute path for the file to copy that file I'm copying file one using absolute path and then I'm going in here and then I'm going to name the file name is file x okay let's see if it's going to work and it did CD uh, oh maybe it created the folder name okay maybe not so it did create the file we copied file one here right but we we copied the file one is already there but we renamed the file one to file X how do we know if it's the same file here? Let's let's put some content in it, then that way we know it's the same file. I'm gonna remove the file from here. That file is gone. So I'm gonna do cat file one.
Okay, cat uh, file one. So this is the content here, right? So I'm gonna run this command here. So file X is there, so let's get file X. It uh, copied file one into file X. Need a cat file one, right? No. I I use this command. This command is like copying the file one and then copying to this new file file x. It's renaming it. Right? It didn't exist here. Let me remove file one file x from. So file x doesn't exist, right? Let me run this command again. And then let's see, there is a file x. Hmm. Maybe it... Uh, Yeah, it won't. This command is supposedly, let's see if I add R to it. Okay, obviously it's not working. Let me just do one. Oh, oh, okay. See, I, I'm copying from the wrong place. Because I cat the file and I should have been using this file here. And then I'm gonna name it file X. You see, this is how you do a troubleshooting. So in this folder, file X doesn't exist, and then the file one has this content in it, right? So let's let me run this. I put in the wrong password. Okay, now it's giving you 46. Okay, so let's do file X doesn't exist. Now all of a sudden file X is there, then you can type file X and you should see the content. I was just copying the wrong file. It was working all along. You mean you were copying it from the wrong directory? Yeah.
Okay. I mean, that's all to it to copying the file from one place to another place. And then uh, you see, you have seen how you would uh, copy the, from one folder to another folder and direct. You just use hyphen R. For files is not necessarily, but you could use it for directory too. Let me see if there is any other easy topic I could cover in 15 minutes. Anybody tried going into the assessment? Uh, I did look over, I just haven't done any of it yet. Okay. And when you're taking the interview, just keep all these things open, okay? Like this and then keep the course notes open. You could have opened this in multiple windows and then that way you could browse back and forth, but definitely keep this open in another window like this. And then keep this open here. Uh, like. Keep this in new tab. Chrome works better and keep it like like nice and big in here and then always keep this control F ready. If somebody is asking something about uh, run level, just type run level and there you go. Okay. All right. I. Tomorrow, if everybody could uh, be on time, and I'll cover this uh, one of these big topics here. Probably, I want to get get this uh, DNS DNS out of the way, and then uh, there's a big big topic here. There's a lot of things involved, and then uh, we could move forward. And then the scripting is coming um, for this. Everybody has to be available for you to understand. I gave you a little bit but there's a deeper uh, we're going to do deeper scripting because uh, you would be you won't if you have like five or ten computers if you want to fix same problem you can't be just do going into one at a time and then fixing it you have to do a script you have to write a script and it will take care of it this thing you don't have they won't ask you in the interview uh, you just say yes, you uh, you know the scripting and you have a bunch of scripts saved and then you go in there and edit as needed. Okay. I'm going to end here. Anybody has any questions?